a small little creature indeed, a dwarf mongoose, and it's sitting so perfectly on this log. It's been sat there for the last five minutes very happily. And Craig, if you pan very slowly to the right, there's another one on a tiny termite mound, also doing exactly the same thing. You see it there, just across the road. There it is. Yep, you got him. They're having such a lovely morning. They've definitely been out for a little while now, foraging around the place, eating some scorpions, finding some eggs maybe, picking up termites and ants and various other things, grasshoppers no doubt. And now things have reached a little lull, so they're going to have a bit of a rest, I think. Find a refuge in one of their temporary dens, all throughout their range. Oh, look, look, here comes the other one. All throughout their range, they will have little temporary dens. You saw it go into the end, edge of that log there. And there'll be little temporary refuges like that all over their little home range. And I suspect they live in the termite mound that is behind us. It's a very big termite mound. This is very sweet. We've had a little bit more squirrel alarm calling action since you last saw us, but otherwise really it's very quiet out here. I can see a large, uh, well, Independence Day craft heading this way. I suspect that probably means we're going to have a drone shot at some stage, unless Connor's just flying maneuvers. I don't think Connor will be able to see a dwarf mongoose from the drone. Maybe break time is over now, and they're going to start having themselves some more foraging time. Now, many of you know, of course, that they have a fairly strict social structure where there's a very strict dominance hierarchy amongst male and female, separate hierarchy for each. But what I didn't realize is that apparently the youngsters, <laughs> the youngsters only become sexually mature at around about two to three years. Now, I don't believe a bir a, an animal like this lives for much longer than sort of five or six years, I wouldn't have thought. So they disperse, sorry, no, they d disperse at two to three years old. Uh, the males disperse to different troops, but the females, uh, but they attain sexual maturity at a year. Now they are alarm calling. Oh, you know what they're shouting at? They're sh actually shouting at the drone. They think it's an eagle. So there you can see where we are from the sky. And the mongoose just in front of us. And they're all watching up towards the drone going... They think it's an eagle. <laughs> this is hilarious. Now as you are turning round us like this in this sort of 360 degree point of interest they call it, the mongoose are following the drone going round us, then looking to each other to decide if there is this is actually a threat. So they're looking to watch if the other ones are going to alarm call at it. They all seem to have calmed down for now, but they're very, keeping a very careful eye on Connor as he flies around us. Isn't that great? So as I was saying there, the males leave the troop when they're two to three years old. The f they all achieve sexual maturity at a year. Now, when you consider something like a rodent, a squirrel, or a, a well, a standard issue house rat, they, they achieve sexual maturity poof, probably in a few months. And for this tiny little thing to take a year to reach sexual maturity is quite something. But, of course, they don't need to go through the expense of achieving sexual maturity earlier than that because some of them will never breed. It's only the oldest, the alpha pair, within the troop that actually breeds. So perhaps it's just not a priority. Hmm. 
<laughs> Larry, you say, if these are dwarf mongoose, is there a full-size mongoose, and do they live in South Africa? Larry, we have got four species of mongoose here, sometimes five, if you live close to water. Uh, they are the dwarf mongoose, the banded mongoose, which also lives in a troop. It's about twice the size of the dwarf mongoose. The slender mongoose, which is about twice the size again, and lives alone, a solitary existence. And then we have the white-tailed mongoose, which is probably one and a half times the size of a, of a slender mongoose, and they are nocturnal. And so, yes, I suppose you might say that the others are full size. I, I guess the, the white-tailed mongoose would be the closest we have to <laughs> what you might term a full-sized mongoose. And then you might be lucky to see a gray mongoose down on the rivers sometimes. But those four that I told you about are the ones that you can see much more commonly than any of the others. This one has a friend coming to join it now. Isn't that sweet?